Hi, this is your professor Tae Wei Wang. In this lecture, I would like to summarize chapter 1 from the textbook Database Processing Fundamentals, Design and Implementation. This is the 15th edition. Uh, remember, my summary will not cover comprehensively everything the textbook had to say. Instead, I would like to make the interpretation of uh, what I perceive as important points uh, that is related to chapter 1. First of all, when you are reading the textbook or even reading the slide of the textbook, do pay attention to some of the notation your textbook used. The textbook used blue color font to highlight some of the important terminology and also use uh, capital letter or capital words to emphasize on some important concept. For example, all capital words are usually represent a keywords in a SQL language or um, a table name. So starting from chapter one, you will be starting to be exposed to many terminology. And these terminology may be slightly different from what you perceive in the real life. Many of these terminology are also misused or used to represent different concepts in different contexts. So be careful of uh, what you are using when you are using these terminology. So on this particular slide, you see there are one, two, three, four, five different highlighted words. Database, tables, instance, data, and relationships. When you read this definition, be very critical about understanding this definition. For example, bullet item number two says data is stored in tables. Well, not all data are stored in tables. Everything that uh, can be saved and retrieved are data. Therefore, data can be saved on web page that can be saved on uh, any Word document or PDF document. Anything record information or uh, any record can be considered uh, data. The other terminology here is the term instance. Instance in here uh, represent a um, occurrence of the data. In many situations, especially in our Oracle environment, which will be the environment we use most in this particular course, instance represent a installation of the memory area on, on your database server computer. So when you are reading all these definitions, uh, just keep them in mind and uh, uh, keep a mental record of all these terminology and come back later compared to other use and other situations that you might be using these terminologies. So let's go back to the terminology tables. And uh, the statement earlier was data are stored in table. This is true for something what we call a relational database world. It is not true before the relational database era and uh, after somewhere between two, 1995 to today, uh, we call this a NoSQL era. Nonetheless, with the population popula popularity of the relational database, table-based databases are still the dominant database used in the commercial world. On this particular slide, you see a typical database stored in three different tables. These tables are related using a concept called keys. Keys are column in a table. They are related from one table to another. From the first glance, for those of you who has no database training before, this looks like an Excel table. As a matter of fact, uh, this is a screenshot copied from Microsoft Access database system. In a way, the spreadsheet software such as Microsoft Excel or Google Spreadsheet are also considered database in a relational world, even, even though the uh, spreadsheet data are not following the relational database rule. They are relatively easy to be converted into relational database. In chapter three and four of our textbook, when we discuss the uh, normalization theory, we will do a lot of job converting existing data, which means data usually stay in the spreadsheet format and move them into a relational environment, such as Microsoft SQL Server Microsoft Access, or in our case, Oracle environment. 
To discuss the structure of your database, usually uh, in practice we use a diagram or a set of language to represent these uh, structure. In this set of language, a lot of time people will call them metadata. And diagram like this is also part of the metadata definition that we usually encounter. For people who have some exposure to database, will immediately say, oh, uh, what we are seeing here is something called the Entity Relationship Diagram, or ER Diagram. But the fact is, it is not uh, an ER Diagram. This diagram you are seeing is directly generated from Microsoft Access Engine. Sometimes we call it a Relational uh, Model or Relational Diagram instead of uh, Entity Relationship uh, Diagram. And later in our data design, chapters, including chapter 5 and chapter 6, we will talk more in details about the difference between a relational model and a ER model. Simply saying, ER model is a conceptual data model, and the relational model we're seeing here is something what we call a logical model, or a model that can be directly implemented into a database management system. One of the key concepts we have to de develop in learning a database is to understand the architecture of a database system. The biggest breakthrough of database system design came in the late 1970s, when the relational database model was invented. The basic idea of a relational database is to separate data from applications. In the old time, before, uh, before 1970s, data and uh, application are usually bundled together, and data are usually saved in files, and application will access those files to do all the job that the user wants to do in terms of calculation, in terms of presentation, or in terms of just uh, uh, going through some business process. However, that traditional system creates a very big database management problem a lot of time people has difficulty of finding files and uh, bundle files together to create a comprehensive view of the entire database. Other times people will have trouble restore data when application is crashed in an older computer. That crashing is a very common situation. A lot of time when application crashed, data are lost in the middle. So a relational database tried to correct that particular problem by separating data and application. Now doing so, uh, we can use a process in our system administration called backup uh, to backup the data instead of the application. Because the application can be always reinstalled and uh, uh, updated. But data, when you lost, it will be uh, permanently lost. So protecting data become important. And with the limited resource in the past of a storage, uh, it is important uh, that we do not back up everything. So we data back up the data instead. It created an environment or architecture that we see today, uh, very similar to what you see in figure 1.8. There are three important components or three tiers in database system. The first uh, tier is the data, is the source of the data. That's where the data is saved. The second tier is the DBMS, or Database Management System. This is the system that um, uh, we understand today as most of the popular commercial database that uh, we are talking about. Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database System, and uh, Teradata, IBM DB2, MySQL, all these are uh, DBMS. And finally, the third layer is the database application. Database application can change very quickly. Usually, database applications are designed to accommodate business operations. So when business operations change, uh, the database application needs to be redesigned, rewritten, and recompiled. Separating these three components become uh, the ultimate advantage of uh, uh, the system architecture that we know today. For those of you who have taken my system as a design class, we know that uh, usually we divide a system architecture into three important 
component or uh, layers or or diff three different concepts, but uh, regardless of what you're call calling them, uh, the three components are data, process, and interface. So you can see a clear uh, footage of that uh, uh, lines of thought in terms of the three-tier architecture in the database uh, system design. Another improvement of the relational database world uh, was that uh, the invention or, or definition, I should not say invention, the uh, design of the SQL language or SQL language. Just like many other information systems, uh, the marketplace is full of different vendors try to create their own standard and compete with each other. The uh, very popular nowadays uh, competition you see is iOS versus Android, for example. Two different platforms usually compete with each other uh, using different standards. Uh, that create a problem of compatibility. So the uh, Android application cannot run on iOS. iOS application cannot run on Android. So uh, for the application or software company, it creates a, a problem. Whenever we try to release a new software in different platform, you have to create different version of it. And this is the problem today. This was the problem also in uh, 30, 40 years ago when relational database was um, uh, designed. Um, there are many vendors of the DBMS system uh, or database management system. Uh, and finally, they agree upon on some standard. And the standard is uh, a protocol of accessing or the database. And this standard later on be called the SQL language. And everybody will use, the assumption is if everybody use the same SQL language, it will not be a matter of who will be the DBMS vendor anymore. And we can spend more time uh, develop our uh, energy to focus on the database application development because database application is the uh, the part of the system that changed very rapidly over time due to the requirement of the business operation change. And the database on the right hand side usually grow. The structure, however, will not usually change that much. For example, if you keep track of a customer database from the 1970s, to today's. If you uh, imagine uh, what you want to keep track of your customer in the 1970s and what do you want to keep track of the uh, information about your customer in the 1990s, uh, they may be uh, different, but uh, the majority part of uh, the database will be the same. Say, for example, you want to keep track of their name, uh, their email address, their physical address, their phone number, their credit card. These are all the same information, either that's in the 1970s or in the 2020. So um, database grow, but database application change. If we can keep the middle two parts uh, constant, uh, that will make the system very scalable and upgradable in the time we are today. Among the three different components of um, a database system, the thing that um, um, confused most people will be the uh, system called the database management system. This terminology called DBMS has the term management in it. It's basically saying that this particular system is used for management purpose. So once the database structure has been confirmed or uh, decided, the, mo the majority of the job that people do every day will be the uh, management job. And this management job including create, modify, read, enforce rules, and control, and so on and so forth. For those of, the, for those of you who are coming from a undergraduate database class, the application you usually use is the Microsoft Access Database. Now, one of the interesting things about the Access Database is uh, almost all the college students in the uh, information system discipline will learn the Microsoft Access database. However, uh, in real world, uh, not many organizations, even smaller company, uh, will use Microsoft Access. I think the main reason is that um, uh, you can pretty much do everything you want to do in Microsoft Access in the Microsoft Excel, the spreadsheet software. 
So uh, and spreadsheet spreadsheet software seems to be a much user friendly and more accessible software for everybody. So uh, not really people would like to use Microsoft Access. However, uh, if you compare Microsoft Access um, closely with uh, Spreadsheet, you will find many uh, differences. One of the most important uh, differences is that uh, uh, Microsoft Access will enforce the uh, data definition rule or so-called data structure rule. It has some sort of a data validation um, function, you can call that function or feature that you will not be able to see in uh, Excel. In Excel, to enforce data validity, to make sure the data is correct, you have to pretty much do it manually or write a, uh, a program or function to enforce it. But uh, many of these um, uh, data control functions are enforced automatically in Microsoft Access. This include relate table together into a more structured database. And Microsoft is a special database management system because Microsoft Access also provide application in addition to the DBMS that is uh, uh, traditionally be the heart of the DBMS system. So it is a bundle software. The other important feature, or I should say the important uh, difference between the Microsoft Access compared to other uh, database management system is it is usually designed for a single machine use. It's not so scalable to multiple machine or on a network. Because of this one biggest uh, uh, restriction of Microsoft Access single machine use, it limited the popularity of Access in the business world. And uh, if you have the concern, uh, says, uh, can Microsoft Access be installed on a network and other people can access the database through other computer? Uh, the answer is very quickly yes, but uh, it's not uh, what it's designed to be. So uh, instead of using Microsoft Access, uh, most of the uh, organizations, including commercial or I mean business, uh, they will use this more clear uh, three their type of architecture to create their system or database system. Now the stereotype for different type of uh, system in terms of its um, complexity, compatibility, scalability. Scalability is probably the most important thing that uh, we uh, usually have this perceptions in the database world as a different company has a different sort of like position in the database world. So as you can probably see that the uh, uh, IBM Oracle uh, are on the right hand side of the spectrum and the Microsoft Access on the very left hand side, lowest end of the spectrum. And the market share for a large company to keep their data is also fall under this type of uh, ranking. Oracle is still the number one of uh, uh, relational database market However, the situation has been changing since about uh, 2015 or so, when uh, many companies are moving their data from their traditional company-owned database to a cloud environment. So the um, ecosystem is now changing, and every one of these companies is actually moving into the cloud as well. And uh, in terms of the adoptions of different type of uh, database uh, management, um, uh, it's everywhere and some company are moving totally to cloud some company are still uh, tend to keep their data in-house and many company are using a hybrid system put some data on the cloud and uh, some data they also keep their uh, in their own server uh, so we'll, uh, it become a very complicated and but at, at the same time uh, uh, an environment create a lot of opportunity for jobs. So if you get a, a pretty good sense about the, uh, the the environment, the ecosystems of different large organization vendor, and you might just find where you fit best in terms of uh, learning your 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 uh, competent competency and the knowledge, so that you can acquire a important position in a uh, organization that you uh, desire to work for. 
In this course, however, uh, give you the foundation. And my idea is that um, among all these important things that e ecosystem, different paradigm we talk about, the most important thing to learn is still the SQL language. So uh, among uh, the 10, 12 assignments that we will have in this particular course, you will have at least uh, four or five of them related to the SQL language. The structure of this book is uh, based on the three different perspectives of how we uh, face the learning of a database system. And uh, the three perspective is coming from the three design perspective. And uh, the first uh, perspective is something what we call the database design based on existing data. This is probably the uh, most uh, useful in a smaller scale organization when companies are using Excel spreadsheet or try to do some data analytics using Excel spreadsheet. And when you move the data from uh, sources like Excel spreadsheet or even Word document, or sometimes just simply copy from the web page, and uh, you want to put them into a more organized, structured uh, environment. This is the uh, database design concept that we are learning. And the basic theory or foundation knowledge is uh, something what we call normalization theory. The second category of the database design is called uh, uh, new system design or new system development. A new system development is a fun thing to do. And a lot of these um, uh, undergraduate database class will focus probably three, four weeks is on the on this particular category. You will learn uh, ER diagram, uh, you will learn the relationship, how they kind of uh, fit together and try to understand the uh, the business environment and data requirement from the ER diagram. However, I will say that uh, this category is probably the most unlikely situation you will be getting yourself into unless you will becoming a uh, developer. Uh, say, for example, if you are uh, de designing a new a new uh, video game that you might need to design a uh, new database. Otherwise, most of the uh, database that we use today uh, is w w is not designed by uh, the person like you and me. It will be designed by the software vendor. Uh, if you use a ERP system, uh, it's designed by Oracle's or or SAP. If you are using a CRM system. The database already be designed by the Salesforce or some other company already. So even though that learning database design in uh, through conceptual model ER diagram is fun, and uh, uh, many other courses, database courses in college usually use this as a, a main testing material. Uh, in our class, we will not spend too much time. We'll spend a couple weeks and uh, try to review some of the concept. And that's about it. And it will become a, a tool that we're gonna, we can use uh, using conceptual model to make a diagnostic uh, function of the database. Uh, try to predict any data problem that, that can go wrong in your current database. This will be a good tool. We will still, still learn new, new database design, but the chance of you doing that will be a risk. The final category will be a database redesign. And this is the category will become very important. Well, actually, I should say the most important category of our learning. Uh, why? Because uh, many of you, when you are taking the database class, your goal is to become a data scientist or data uh, analyst. To become that particular person, um, let me give you a, uh, an estimate. Uh, from from the uh, the article I have read so far, most of the time during the work of a, a data analyst is spending on data preparation. How much time in a data a data analyst's work is spent on data preparation? The most reliable data I obtain is that uh, about sixty percent, over half of the time you spend in the uh, analyzing your data, generate report are actually preparing data. So uh, what is uh, what are the uh, know-how required for preparing data? Well, one of the biggest component is what you learn in this class called the uh, uh, database class. 
you should be able to use the database system uh, in a way that you can handle a large amount of data and moving large amount of data from one system to another. That is the uh, uh, the keywords here you see on the slide say migrate database to new database. So um, some of the concepts that we're going to be learning in uh, chapter 8, 9, 10 were all related to this. As a matter of fact, that uh, you cannot get into chapter 8 unless you have the foundation of uh, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. So uh, everything that we prepare for you in this particular class, even uh, the, the, the project assignment design in this particular class, are uh, focused on the, uh, the last category, redesign your database, moving database from one place, and do some changes, redesign, and move into a new, new uh, target database, and using that target database to, uh, to write report or build a, a dashboard for decision-making purpose. So uh, data migration, moving data from one place to another. Uh, in our exercise, of course, we simplify everything in an academic setting. So you move data from one database to the other. But in reality, you might be encounter situation. You have to combine multiple. In your textbook, of course, using a simple diagram, says, oh, two databases put together. And a lot of time, it's not only put two databases together. Uh, sometimes you will uh, take non-database data or NoSQL data, non-structured data, and uh, combine them with structured data and somehow put them together into a, a new structure so you can do analysis. And finally, in this particular chapter, you will read a little bit about uh, the history of uh, how databases uh, evolve over time from the very early time in the 1950s and 60s when IBM was the only company that actually built database for companies. Until today, we have uh, pretty much everything. And one of the biggest uh, uh, movement is called the big data movement or uh, no SQL, not only SQL movement. And uh, these will be discussed, uh, well, because they're not what I consider as the core competency. Those are more general knowledge you should be obtaining from uh, news, from other sources. So instead of discuss them in detail, I put some videos that uh, I copy from YouTube or some other sources and uh, share with you. Uh, hopefully you can uh, know more about those uh, development. It will be a good idea to know some of the history of database uh, uh, evolution, and it will be a good uh, topic to talk about, especially during the interviews or when you talk to professional. Uh, they like to discuss the uh, the pro and cons and uh, which company is doing what. So uh, it's always good to know different paradigm, different system, and how they evolved to the situation we have today and try to become a more contemporary. So you will not be doing the old job when we are already moving to the new uh, big data era. SQL language, however, uh, regardless we are in big data or not, still uh, very important. So we will still focus on SQL, even though we have non-SQL movement. All right, there you go. That's my summary of chapter one. And uh, until that we see Chapter 2, I will talk to you in other places uh, in discussion forum or send me email or talk to me during our online synchronous session. Until next time, bye.